For 14 days in June, two Dutch professors interviewed more than 50,000 Iranians online for an unprecedented survey covering topics from faith to politics to religious life. The authors say they discovered a huge shift that should fundamentally change how we look at Iran today. One major standout from professors Poiman Tamina Arab and Amar Maliki is that despite Iran's census claims that 99.5 percent of the population is Shiite Islam, only 32 percent of their respondents identified as such. The next largest group are the nons, at 22 percent, which led the authors to conclude that Iranians are abandoning religion for secularism. Broadly speaking, this survey is important because it puts data behind the largely non-empirical argument that analysts have been forced to deal with, which is that Iranian society is less religious. This survey, this data proves that Iranian society is exceptionally less religious. Approximately half of the population reported losing their religion. 60 percent said they do not pray anymore. Younger people reported higher levels of dissatisfaction with religion. And an overwhelming number of respondents were critical of authorities using strict Islamic laws to govern daily life. For example, 72 percent of those surveyed opposed the law mandating all women to wear a hijab, the Islamic veil covering. And when the authors dug a little deeper on questions central to that faith, even less numbers believed in the core tenets of Shia Islam. Only 37 percent believed in life after death. 30 percent believed in heaven and hell. An even lower number, 25 percent, believed in the coming of their Islamic savior known as the Mahdi or 12th Imam. All of these trends, the pushback on the hijab, the lack of belief in the, in the coming of the Mahdi, the lack of a willingness to identify with Shiism, the willingness to identify with other faiths, are all a result of politics in the past 40 years of the Iranian government. And as the Islamic Republic has tried to shove religion down the throat of Iranians to mask their authoritarian grasp on power, you've seen Iranians contest their authoritarianism by contesting faith itself. The survey also revealed that as Islam diminishes, Christianity is growing. 1.5 percent of those surveyed identified themselves as Christian. And that is compared to about uh, 30 years ago being less than 1 percent. Uh, that less than 1 percent, everybody thought it was less than 0.5 uh, percent. Mike Ansari of Mohabbat TV, a ministry that broadcasts the gospel into Iran, tells CBN News the survey is significant because it lends credence to what mission groups have been saying for years. This data is important because it's indicative of the fact that uh, in the country of Iran, in the midst of persecution and Islamic rule, Iranians are turning their back uh, to, to their faith, to their institutional faith, and, and receiving Christianity as a new faith. Iran is one of the most dangerous places for Christians and other minority faith groups. Non-Muslims are often arrested or severely tortured for sharing or practicing their faith. Yet, in a sign of changing times, the survey found that 41 percent of respondents believed all religions should have the right to public proselytizing, and around 54 percent said it was a good idea for their children to learn about other faiths in school. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, that's a different view of Iran. I don't think you're going to get it on any other show on television, but we're here to tell you what's really happening there. And it's good news. It means that there's hope. Uh, the theocracy is not as in charge as we are led to believe by their own propaganda and could around uh, emerge once again. You go back all the way to the 1950s, uh, there was a wonderful democracy that was emerging there. Unfortunately, our own CIA messed that up, a guy named Kermit Roosevelt. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, he was a relative, and, and he was with the CIA, and, and he literally engineered uh, a change in their government, and they haven't recovered from that. But wouldn't it be great if they could come back and be a true secular democracy, 
that would be a wonderful thing for the Middle East and for the entire world. Certainly would. Well, we have a couple of questions that have come in, Gordon. This is a question that came in on YouTube. Serenity asks, what consequences do the youth faith face for turning away from the Muslim faith? I think a lot of people don't understand within Islam, if you turn away from the faith as a child, if, if, you're, if you're a young person, you turn away from the faith, it condemns your mother to hell. Um, that is the reason behind the honor killings. In practice, honor killings only happen to women. They only happen to girls. Wow. Uh, but it, it, it is a shame on your mother, and you are condemning your mother to an eternity in hell because you've left the faith uh, and you've become uh, an infidel. Um, another part of Muslim uh, theology that I think a lot of Westerners don't understand is once a land is under Sharia law, if it ever turns from Sharia law, other Muslims are obligated to struggle to jihad uh, until it returns to bring it back. To bring it back. Uh, that is considered a shame on the prophet. Uh, so these changes aren't going to come easily. And uh, this is certainly a time to pray for Iran and to pray for people who are saying, we, we want freedom of conscience, we want freedom of religion, we want freedom of speech, we want freedom of assembly. All the things that we enjoy in Western democracies, all of which, by the way, are the fruit of Christianity. Christianity is the one that was the driver. We want freedom of conscience because forced conversion is no conversion at all. Uh, you have the right, you have the free will to decide. So we want cultures where free will is uh, allowed to flower and you can have the belief of your choice. So um, it would be wonderful. I, that's, it's some, certainly something to pray for. Boy, it surely is for truth to be penetrating people's hearts because to supersede that kind of, you know, a curse on your mother, I mean, the shame level of that is... And the whole family's involved yeah. in that. So... Your siblings, your brothers and sisters, will actually be the ones who walk, kill you. Yeah, walk that Which, out. Which, wow. um, let's pray. Let's just take okay. a moment right now. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask for protection for believers uh, in, in Iran. We also ask for protection for all those who are questioning Islam. Uh, and we pray for the people there that you would bring freedom. And we are reminded that you will not rest, you will not falter until you see justice on the earth. So, Lord, we just ask for your people in Iran. They are your children. We ask because we know that you are our loving Heavenly Father. We ask that you would free them and be with them and encourage them. Cause your face to shine upon them and give them peace. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.